Are we going live? Are we going live? Hey, let's just check it. Okay, we're going live. Hey everyone, welcome back. Web Squadron, I'm Imran Sadiq. And I hope you like, subscribe and follow us after watching this video. And I hope it goes well. Because we're using OBS, which is free. And rather than using Restream that I was using before, I'm using OBS now because I think the quality of the footage on Facebook and YouTube is going to be 10 times better than what we had before. So if, I, if you do see me glancing over this way a little bit, it's just because I've got another screen on where I'm trying to keep up to date with any comments or anything that comes through on, um, on YouTube or anything like, or even Facebook as well. So I've just got to very quickly just check my screen, make sure everything's okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. Right, cool. So anyone, if you want to post any comments about how you're finding the footage, or if you've got any questions about anything we cover off today, please do fire them our way, because that's what we're here for. We're here to answer your questions and help you out with regards to your business, in terms of supporting your clients. Maybe you are a client. Maybe you want to understand a bit more about how the website business works. But some of the topics we're covering off today, and I'm just going to zoom myself down. Whoops, wrong one. This is the beauty of doing things online. Everything goes wrong eventually. Let me just shrink myself down there. There we go. Cool. So what we're covering off today is how do you get leads? How do you charge your customers? Incentivize clients and how do you make a profit? So if anyone is watching this at the moment, please do leave a comment. Hey, cool, John. Good to see you there. Um, let me just move this a little bit. Things are looking good on this end. Thank you, John. Thanks for the support. Hey, cool. And I'm hoping the footage is a lot more clearer when we, when this is available on YouTube. Anyone who's watched a YouTube live stream, the quality is like 480p. And I'm like, no, this is not good. So I've now got a 4K camera. However, it's probably going to be 1080p. Anyway, getting leads, charging customers, incentivizing and making a profit. Now, what I'm going to talk about here, this is not gold dust. This is not the perfect answer that's going to work for everyone, okay? But what I am going to give you is experience from what I've discovered and what I've learned from others as well and from speaking to people as well. Okay, so let's just get, let's just get, we've got quite a lot to go through. And I'm happy to share um, this page if anyone does want it, you know, um, drop us a message or email us and I'll happily share you a link to this. Now, one thing we touched on last week, and I want to go over it again, is about packages. In terms of Elemental Pro licenses, or you might have purchased a license for, say, a theme or a template or another plugin. Like you might be using Amelia booking system or there's tons of stuff you might be using. Premium plugins, not the free ones. One of the mistakes you could make is that you purchase them. I mean, you obviously charge your customer a fee to build their website, but you're absorbing the cost. And what if you're spending like £100 a year for a license for their website to be online? Why should you keep paying that out? Now, of course, if you charge them £20,000 for a website, I wish, or they were paying like a £2,000 a year maintenance package, again, I wish, then you could probably absorb it. But what you really want to do is not do that. And here's the reasons why you don't want to do that. Once you get into a mindset where you absorb the cost a lot, that's a difficult mindset to break. Because once you do it, you'll keep doing it because you'll feel like I've got to offer it to the client. Otherwise, why are they going to use me? You know, it's my only way of enticing them in. So get out of that mindset. The second thing is you're going to be burdened with those overheads. So let's say you purchase a premium plugin and the client then says, actually, we don't want to use you now. Goodbye. See you later. Well, you're probably not going to get a refund now for that Elemental Pro license or a particular theme or whatever. You're now burdened with it. You might use it on another client, win-win, but what if you don't? It's now gone to waste. And I have to admit, there were occasions last year where we purchased some plugins and the client then didn't use us. So we purchased it before they committed to a contract. Big mistake, right? And we never ended up using those plugins for anyone else. You know, in dollars, that's $150 gone down the drain. Boop, it's gone. You know, and you don't want to get yourself into that problem. By absorbing the cost, you're reducing the amount of profit you're going to make. And you're going to be, you might like we did, spend money on plugins to test a solution. Client doesn't compensate you for it, right? 
So now we won't go investigating plugins or purchasing them unless we know the client is contracted to users and they have paid an upfront fee that will cover the cost of that premium, that plugin. Okay, so bear that in mind. And now, what is the solution to this? And it's what I discussed last week. If you buy just one license per customer, so each time a client needs Elementor Pro, you buy it per client, you're going to get to a point where you're actually not going to be making any profit because you're just buying what they could have got themselves. But if you were to buy more than one license and don't buy too many, OK, just buy like, you know, like a package of three or a package of five. But if you think you're going to use it with someone else as well, you can actually turn around a profit. So let me explain what I mean by that. If you look at this example here, this table, one Elemental Pro license is forty nine dollars. Roughly about 35, whatever, pounds sterling in the UK. One license. Pro rata that, it's $49. $49 for one license, pro rata per license, 49 You don't offer any discount because you can't. It's $49. That's what you're paying. So monthly, that works out to $4.08, okay? If you charge that back to the customer and they pay that either as an upfront fee or monthly, you make zero profit. That's good for the client because you're not ripping them off, but you're not getting anything out of it. But if you purchase the next package up, which is $99 for three licenses, right? Pro rata, that works out to $33 per license, right? Just think about that now. Let's say you said to the client, you can go and get Elemental Pro yourself if you want, $49. Or if I give you a 5% discount, so it's about 44 and a bit dollars, the monthly cost is now $3.88, a little bit cheaper, but the profit for you is $13.55 per license because you're getting, you're getting it at a discounted rate. They're going to be paying $44 and a bit. So they're, they're getting a discount off the 49. This is great for them. They're not getting ripped off. But you're making a profit because you're only paying $33 because you bought three licenses, right? So at the end of the year, 12 months later, you've made just over $40 profit for yourself. That's It's a win-win for you and it's a win-win for the client because they only paid $44 and a bit. dollars. Uh, oh, sorry, I might move myself to the top of the screen. Okay, John, I'll do that. John just mentioned move myself to the top of the screen. Let's try that. Uh, here we go. Sorry, John. You're very right. I was covering the info and I must bear that in mind. Thank you, John. John is my sidekick. We're like Batman and Robin. He's Batman. I'm Robin. Right. So by you doing the $99 package, right, you're going to be making a profit of over $40 a year if you use up all three licenses. But let's go a step further. Right. What if you now go to the next two packages? Right. So the next. So if you go up to the 25 package, one hundred and ninety nine dollars, it's a lot of money. But for 25 licenses, again, that pro rata works out to just under eight dollars a license. You again offer the client a five percent discount on the forty nine. They will pay forty four and a bit dollars. They are getting a discount. Win win for them, but you still get three dollars eighty eight a month. The profit is thirty eight dollars and fifty nine over a year. If you were to sell or use up all twenty five dollars um, licenses, that's nine hundred and sixty four dollars. Just absorb that profit you've just made because you invested in the hundred and ninety nine. So you give the client a discount. Great for them but you make a profit as well. And if you go for the big one, which I do not advise unless you know you are going to make get a load of clients, okay? But $999, a 1,000 licenses, that's less than a dollar per license, 5%, free 88 per month. You make over $45 profit because of what you've done. You do all the 1,000 licenses, Forty five and a half thousand dollars. Woo! It ain't going to happen. Let's be realistic, right? I mean, 
there's probably someone out there that does use a thousand a year and I would love to know who they are, but $45,500. But if you did get the $999 deal, right, and you only used up 25 licenses of that, so not a thousand, only 25, because it's less than a dollar per license in terms of pro rata, you will make just over $2,000 profit because you invested in the 999 investment upfront package. So it's a big investment, but it pays dividends as time goes on. That's if you can shift 25 licenses um, a year. And I'll be honest, we shifted um, just shy of six, just, no, it was 65. 65 licenses over 12 months. So we luckily were grandfathered into the 199 package from last year, Elementor. So we got a thousand licenses for $199, okay? And very early on, we were just giving away licenses to our clients. Yeah, you want a license, here we go, we give it. Now, any future clients we have, or we have done for a while now, we will be charging them for that. You want Elemental Pro? Fine, you gotta pay for it. If you wanna use the page builder you get with GoDaddy or Wanted Free Reg, fine, but don't complain when you want full on customization, because we can't give you that now. But, Elemental Pro. So there's, here's the way of how the client wins and you win as well. I don't like to rip clients off, okay? I wanna make that really, really clear. So the client surely has got a benefit from this as well. Okay, right, let's now go to, um, yeah, so now, oh, sorry, let me just move down because I know John will mention this. Some costs, we're over here now, some costs cannot be discounted. There are some things that have to be paid up front as a 12 month contract. And I'm talking about things that help the website to function. These are core plugins or core, uh, not plugins, sorry, domain, hosting, certain plugins and certain themes and certain templates. You've got to charge them up front. Now, when you're working out a deal for your client, you start thinking about what package do I offer them? Your basic, basic package that I call the core package OK, has got to be it's got to cover the fundamental things they need to get that website to work. Now, I'm one of those people where I kind of say you don't want to take up ownership or responsibility over the domain and the hosting. It's up to you if you want, but I prefer the client to purchase their domain. And if they want to use this for hosting, fine. But I will sometimes redirect them elsewhere. I don't like to get involved into reseller hostings. I just feel like it's a can of worms and it's a whole lot of technical responsibilities. But if you do, you can work that in your package. But if they get it elsewhere, that's a core fundamental cost they must pay to get their website up front. Now, the most basic package is the core, like I said. And this is where I want to talk to you now about three different packages. Let's just say we had a client and we're going to say the core package, which covers your hosting and your plugins like Elementor Pro, maybe um, WP Rocket, maybe something else. You know, the, the core, core ones, right? Croco Block, whatever, the core ones. $15 per month. They have to pay that. You will make a profit if you purchased multiple Croco Block licenses, multiple WP Rocket, multiple Elemental Pro. You will profit from it. But at the same time, the client actually might get a discounted rate. So it's a win-win for them. Remember that we want to look after our clients. $15, the core. That is just to cover what you need to make your website function. Yeah, okay, it's what they need. But then we have the second package. I've called it check. You will call it maintenance and whatever, the bronze, silver package, whatever. I've just put the word check in because I couldn't be bothered to put a name in. The check package is exactly the same as the core. The only difference is this now includes within it WordPress updates, updating or testing an update on plugin like Elemental Pro. I wouldn't enable auto update on Elemental or Elemental Pro. I would always say disable that, wait a week whenever an update comes out and test it on a backup or a staging site before you enable it. Always be sure what it's gonna do. Maybe the website needs to be restored from their host or your host. Maybe then now and again, they go to their website and go, oh, it looks ugly, what's going on? And you go, yeah, it needs purging. They could do it, but then you could do it as well. You know, you're looking after their website kind of thing. 
I would say that you could increase your cost to $30 per month now. That, that includes the core and a little bit because you're only doing a little bit extra. And by the way, don't quote me on these prices. There are people out there that might charge a whole lot more a month, $100, $200 a month. That is fine. Whatever is your business model that works for you and it's working, that is fine. But I'm just saying core is 15. You're going to make a profit off licenses. Your next one is like checking the website updates, purging and things like that. You can go to 30 and then you go to the active package, which is now 40. I will ask, I will mention why there's only a little bit of a difference in costing there. But the $40, basically that's now revisions. And when I say revisions, don't say you get unlimited. The minute you say you get unlimited revisions, that's it. You are now forever doing revisions until the end of time for them every month, every week, every day. Maybe say to them, you get 10 hours a month. They won't always use it and don't let it roll over. OK, otherwise you'll have 120 hours by the end of the year. Maybe it's six hours. Maybe it's a, maybe it's maybe two or three tasks. Word it carefully. Um, you might revise their keywords, rank math, SEO, whatever you're using, Yoast, whatever. So you might use that to update the keywords, basically, because, um, you know, they might have keywords in like um, camping in Ireland. And it's fine now, but next month you might want to refine it. You might want to put Camping Island Londonderry, you know, things like that. So you might offer that. That's not going to take a long time, right? You're just going to go into Rank Math and just change the keyword and maybe a few stuff and that's it. I would say 15, 20 minute job max. Analytics. If you use Manage WP and we did a video on that, it can, you can actually generate within seconds a report for the client which talks about how the keywords are doing, what pages are being visited, what's the activity like on the website. You generate a PDF and you email it to them. They don't know that. They think you're doing loads of work. In a way you aren't because you're going to have to check and make sure it's correct. But you could do that and send them a report. That is $40. Now, the difference between the active and the check is only $10. And there's a reason for that. It's like the old McDonald's analogy, isn't it? You know, small, regular, large. The cost between the small and regular, there's a tiny bit, but the difference between the regular and the large is like tiny, right? So most of the time people will go, actually, I'll have the large fries and the large Coca-Cola, please, because they want you to go to the higher one. So don't make your active or your higher costing package like $100, 15, 30 and 100, because they're never going to touch the 100. They might, but you're scaring them off. To try and think about what can you do to entice them, but at the same time, make it reasonable for them as well. Um, hey, yeah, uh, Gotta Getem has said he would love to bump into me somewhere. Well, let me know where you're from, Gotta, and maybe we will bump into each other one. I went to Borneo, uh, when was it? 14 years ago. If you're from Borneo, I don't know if I'll be returning there one day, but if we do, maybe we'll bump into each other. But let me know where you're from. So, have a think about your packages, okay, in terms of costings. But remember, your core one, your basic, basic one, they have to pay that. If they do not pay that, their website won't work, either due to hosting, Elemental Pro, WP Rocket, or something. Something is not going to work. So make that clear to them. Once I've built your website, you can either pay for the license up front, you still make a profit, or you can pay for it monthly, you still make a profit. Either way, okay. Make that clear to them. Okay, I'm just going to scroll down now. Okay, now, things become interesting when you consider the site build. Now, let's pretend we're going to build a website that is $500, okay? Do you charge the $500 up front? You get rid of risk, right? And the client has now paid off what they need to do. However, if a client is struggling with upfront costs or cash, they might not want to do that. We've come across a lot of clients where they were keen to use us, but they were put off because they wanted to pay monthly instead of an upfront cost. And there's pros and cons to that. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that. So Gott has told me that he's from Connecticut, USA. Go USA! <laughs> I hope, what's the weather like over there? Um, it's starting to rain and get miserably cold around here in the UK, which is how it is 90% of the time. But I love it anyway. So option one is you pay, you get them to pay $500 up front and some of them won't want to do that. 
or do you charge them per month? $40, $42 per month. So that's $504 over 12 months. I've rounded it up, by the way, okay? If you, it would be 41 and a bit dollars, actually, if you divided 500 by 12. The problem with this is that unless you have the client tied into a watertight, bulletproof contract, they could run away after one or two months, right? You know, if the website is hosted on their server with GoDaddy or 123 Reg or whoever, they could go away. And they've only paid you for one or two months. Well, that's not great. They've only paid you $84 and that's it. That's the return you had. However, if you do get them to go into a $42 per month contract and they are committed and they sign to a contract and they know that, you know, you will come after them if they don't pay. After two years, you've now, they've now paid $1,008. So not only have you got the $500 within year one, but in year two, they're still paying. So you're now making a profit on that. That on top of the profit from the monthly fee, let's say they were paying like, you know, the active fee here, that's now $40 per month for that, plus $42 for your, whoops, let me just get that down there, $42 as well for the website. So in effect, you're getting $82 per month. So you're making profit all the way around and that will add up as time goes on. So bear that in mind. That's another way of how you can make some income for yourself. But again, please do not rip off customers. Please remember, customers are our friend. Customers give you reviews. They love you. We love them. And we are going to cover off how we can incentivize them even more or help them out. So let's just play around with this scenario, okay? Website build is $500. The domain cost, let's pretend you're using like a, you know, you get a discount. $1 for year one, and it's $15 for year two for the domain. The hosting is $50 for year one, and then $85 for year two onwards, because that's how it works, doesn't it? You get a discount in year one, and then it starts to escalate just a little bit, bit by bit. But most people don't really care. By that point, they're hopefully... Their e-commerce shop is rolling in millions and they don't care by that point. We all wish that. Your Elemental Pro license is $49. You give them a 5% discount because you've bought multiple packages. They pay uh, $46. Sorry, it wasn't $44. It's $46 if you take 5% off. I knew I worked that out wrong. Okay, now the core cost for them is going to be $546 because that's $500 for the site build plus the domain and hosting, right? Sorry, excluding the domain and hosting. If you include the domain and hosting, it goes up to $597. Don't worry too much about the numbers, all right? We're going to get onto the juicy stuff in a moment. Don't sit there scribbling and noting this down. <laughs> um, Gotha just told me that in Connecticut, it's uh, 80 plus Fahrenheit and a bit hot and humid. Ah, uh, we love the sun over here. We get it for about three days and we go crazy with t-shirts and then it rains. Um, so over 12 months, if you exclude the domain and hosting, so all they're now doing is paying the core cost of $500 for the site build plus Elemental Pro, which is $46. OK, if you divide that by 12, that works out to four, just over $45 a month. Right. So over the year, they pay five, four, six. Now, the year one profit that you make, we make, you know, as in the collective family here, you're going to make, um, well, the profit you make in year one is from the site build and Elemental Pro license, right? The profit you made depending on how many licenses you purchased, what we mentioned right at the top. OK, the year two profit is the same profit. So you're making the same amount of money. The only difference in a way for year one and year two is how much time you give them during the year. Does this make sense? So you made a profit in year one because you got $500 for building a website. All it's taken away from you is time. Now, if you're doing it, you know, as a freelancer or an agency or a business or whatever, the time factor kind of slightly goes out the window. Yeah, it's not it's not like um, you're having to drive off and build it on site with the client. That's different. You might have to. But if you're doing it in your home or your office or somewhere, the time is like negligible. So you're making $546 profit or whatever you're making in year one and year two. Win-win for you. Over two years, though, right, over, let's say over two years, if you had 10 customers, right, 
10 customers over two years, you will make $5,100 profit, okay? If they pay up front, because they're paying you 500 and uh, 46, whatever. If, however, those 10 customers pay you monthly, remember this now, they're paying you monthly, and because they pay you monthly, they're going to pay the same fee in year one and year two. You're now going to make $10,000 profit. So having them pay up front is great for immediate income. But if you go with the monthly option where they pay monthly and they keep paying that for as long as they're with you, then you are making profit in year one, year two, year three, year four, etc. And that's brilliant for you, right? So I am one of those people where depending on the client, for some of them, the upfront model is perfectly fine. Okay. For some who are, I don't really want to pay too much for a website. Someone has said they can build it for $50 for me. Why do I want to pay you so much money? You go, fine, we'll give you all of this, but you can do it monthly as long as you commit to a contract and you will forever be paying this amount of money per month. And they might, they will realize and go for that sometimes. And if they go for that, that's great for you. You might offer a reduced monthly fee in year two. And then year three, you might drop it down a bit more. So the longer they're with you, maybe the fee goes down by 5%. That doesn't mean in 20 years time, it's gone to 0%. It's 5% off what they're currently paying. So $100 in year one, you knock off 5%. They then pay $95 in year two. In year three, you knock off 5% off the 95, not the original 100. So the 95 now might go down a bit, but you might have, a, have to have a threshold where you say the lowest it can ever be is $50. So if you're with us for 10 odd years now, it will never go below $50. Otherwise, you're just making zilch income. OK, and again, great for the client. Great for you as well. Right. Now. It might seem that we're focusing on the profit more than customer reward, but. By offering a per, per month option. I'm accepting there is risk because the client could run off. We are giving the client longer to pay the bill. So like I said, we are benefiting them. OK. Yeah. And I have said here, though, that, you know, any clients that pay up front, they're probably going to still need ongoing monthly support. So even if a client pays you up front, right, rather than the per monthly, as long as then paying like a monthly fee. Hey, a no home nomad. Hey, um, hi, thanks for joining in. As long, as long as they're paying a monthly package, like for maintenance of the website, even if they pay up front, you're still going to be making some profit or income from them paying you a monthly fee. I hope that makes sense. OK, it did to me when I wrote this or did this. This is all on a website, by the way. This is like an Elemental Pro website. It's just a page and I just did it on a page because I thought it's easier than me putting up PowerPoint. Death by PowerPoint. Let's do death by Elemental Pro. Is there such a slogan? We've just invented it. You're all going to die now because of Elemental Pro, because of this website. Right. Let's make things a little bit more enticing for the client. OK, now, regardless of whether they pay up front or if they're on a monthly contract, I now say to my clients, hey, if you like what we did, and you're happy with our service and how we came across and how we looked after you. OK, because we did look after you. Anyone you refer, friends, family, business, whoever, you will get 10 percent of the site build. So a client might have paid you five hundred dollars. They refer someone to you who pays a thousand dollars. Client A, right, and I've got an example here. So client A refers LeadX. LeadX agrees to have a site built for $500. We then give client A, who did the original referral, $50. Now you might turn your head at this and go, well, that's quite a bit. Why do I want to give away 10%? Well, without client A referring them, you wouldn't even have got the $500 coming through your door, maybe. I mean, if you're rolling in business coming your way, this model might not work for you. You might go, hey, we're pretty busy. Everyone knows who we are. We don't need this. But if you let your clients know, hey, you pay me currently $82 a month, whatever, for per month for your site build and for your, um, you know, your maintenance package, let's just say. You refer two people to me a month and they use us. You're going to come out with profit 
because you might now come out with a hundred dollars. So you're now going to be a hundred minus 82. You're coming out with $18, which technically means your maintenance in your website is free. So incentivize your clients. Um, hey, hello from Russia. Um, I bet it's not 80 degrees Fahrenheit over there. Please do let me know if it's cold or how it's going there. So here's a way of how you can incentivize your client. So if client A refers five people throughout the year, they get $250 for the year. If they refer 10, they get $500. It can go up and up. What you're creating is almost like a referral scheme, right? It's not like the pyramid scheme where only the top, the person at the top benefits. Well, yeah, you benefit the web designer, developer, the agency, but they benefit as well. So you're saying to them, look, you're going to get a bit of this as well. OK, as a thank you. Right. So, you know, let people know who built your website, you know. And so it's a great way to, again, incentivize them. And again, you're not ripping them off. OK. And if you make your clients feel valued, it's great. They're almost part of your agency now. Right. Because they're now in a way working for you. And it, yes, it is a per sales thing, but all they've got to do is say, hey, Jack, you want a website, right? Hey, I know this really cool guy, Imran Sadiq, Web Squadron. Oh, his videos are gorgeous and amazing. You got to check him out because he will do the best website for you. And of course, if we've charged Jack $2,000, client A will know we did that because Jack will probably talk to client A. So we have to honor that and give $200 back to client A. Fine. We don't mind because we made one thousand eight hundred dollars from the sale. Woo! -hoo! But, you know, we'd all love it if that happened on a daily basis. Right. But hey, it's a great way to work. It's a great way, basically, to build a relationship with your client, get income and just make things work for you all. OK, now this one is quite a tricky one and a touchy subject. How do we get leads? What's the secret? How do we avoid feast and famine? What do I mean by that? I am not talking about your local McDonald's running out of cheeseburgers. That is a different type of famine. I'm talking about where you get a couple of jobs. You've made 500 or a thousand dollars, you know, like profit and income, and you are seriously, seriously happy. And you're now you start you put it in a spreadsheet. And you go, wow, I made two this month. If I make two next month and two the following month, da 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 da. I'm going to have $24 profit, $24,000 profit by the end of the year. Brilliant. But then the following month, you get no clients. And the following month, you get no clients. And the following month, you get a client, but they only want to pay $100 for the website. And you get desperate now and you go, yeah, I'll do it. And you spend two weeks doing a $100 website. Not worth it. And this client is a really difficult client. Hey, do this for me. Oh, I changed my mind. Oh, the color scheme. Oh, I don't want Elemental Pro. I want to go back to using HTML coding. I want pure HTML coded website. At this point, your pants are flying off. Your head is exploding and your hair is falling out. It happens. OK, that's feast or famine. And the other thing is, how, why would a client contact you? Clients aren't going to come running to you unless you are really, really established or you've got other leads or clients referring them into you. And there's tons and tons of strategies out there. You know, getting a niche, making your business niche, um, doing coaching, doing videos, hey, you know, um, advertising, Facebook ads, Google ads, you know, you know all this, right? Now, the problem is, oh, sorry, just got a question here. So RP, the most difficult task is to make a website that will bring money to the client. If this is done, you can make good money and there will be new clients. Um, yeah, so often what it is, is when I get, a, I'll just quickly touch on that before I continue. When I get a client come to me and they say, right, we want to do a website where we're selling vegan chocolate. So someone based in the UK who had links in South Africa wanted to create a website a year ago selling vegan chocolate in South Africa because vegan products haven't fully taken off yet in South Africa. And it's just coming out now. People are getting interested. And they were like, well, there's tons of vegan chocolate that they could source from the UK and internationally using a fulfillment center, they could get it sent to South Africa 
and they could sell it. And business was slow, but it started picking up. Now, what they've done is rather than investing heavily into Facebook ads and stuff like that, they started kind of marketing and trying to get themselves into local newspapers and like lo and trying to get their website mentioned on websites that were already popular for foods and diets and health in South Africa. And that was a better way for them to get their business out there. Of course, because they touched on a product that was very new and they, they, they knew there would be interest, they were able to latch on to something people might want. But if you are selling trainers and the trainers you're selling are just like another shop and another shop and another shop and another shop, why is anyone going to come to you? Especially if you're a brand new website. Unless your costs are like 50% lower, massively marked down, or you give them something extra when they buy. You know, you buy trainers from my website and I'm going to send you a chocolate bar. I don't know, something, you know, and it, you know, some sort of incentive, a free goodie. You're going to be in a very, you know, like, um, uh, what's the word? What's the word? I can't get the word out. Um, you're working in a market that is already very claustrophobic. Yeah, it's already busy, right? So you've got to do something that makes you stand out. And it is very true what RP is saying, is that if you want your website to make money for the client, You've got to do something where you've got to think about their niche and try and advise them and try and get them to kind of either redo their product, think about their product or what they're trying to sell and think about the costings that they're going to do. Right. Um, so in terms of getting leads, like I said, there's always advice out there about coaching, nicheifying and doing stuff like that. I'm a little bit sick to death of the amount of Facebook ads I see all the time about, hey, Look at me. I've got this huge house, which doesn't belong to me. It's cardboard cut out. I've got this huge car that I probably rented out for the day. And look at the clothes I'm wearing. I, you know, they're not even mine. They belong to my dad or something. And I'm going to make you money. And guess what? I'm going to make you super, super rich. But if you want to know my secret, you have to pay me $3,000. And it's a top secret. And I sort of go, well, you're telling me that you're rolling in money. You're making... 10 million pounds a year, but you can't afford to help people out or reveal your secret or share what you're doing. These videos that you're getting that I do on YouTube, they're free. We're not charging you to do a live video. We will be doing coaching one-to-one -one power hours. So there will be a fee for that, but I'm not here to advertise that. But I just find them a little bit false. So, right, let's get back on topic. Getting leads, okay? I do have to go on a tangent. Right. Hate to break it to you, but there is no win-win situation. There is no secret. And no matter what you do, right, with giving away freebies and self-published books. Hey, look at my book. This book is going to tell you how you can get dressed. Without this book, you will be naked for the rest of your life. Buy this book. It's only, it is actually $30 on Amazon because they use crate space to print it. You can normally tell by the quality of the cover, but I will let you have it for $1. And you buy it and you look at it and it's badly formatted and they don't even tell you stuff most of the time. They try and drop a few things because they want you to buy something off them later on. But anyway, they'll have loads of testimonials. One, one website out there which does website. I'm not going to say it, but they do websites for people that like to train. They've got over 5,000 testimonials. Guess what? I did some research. All of those fitness testimonials I think are fake. I'm not going to say who they are, but the reason I think they're fake is because I did some research on the names and either they don't exist, so they dropped off the planet and got abducted by UFOs or whatever, or some of the photos, I actually did a search via Google and I found the photos elsewhere from stock photography or they were on other sites. Hey, what gives? Um, you did that, you can do that, right? You take a screenshot of a photo, just the photo, go to Google and you can do a search and you can find that photo. You did know you can do that, right? <laughs> Um, so, you know, they'll have loads of videos out there um, and they will say, we are going to help you get leads. Right. And they will charge you a fee for it and you're going to come out of it. They might tell you to pay, look, a thousand pounds, dollars up front and we're going to get you 40 leads. And guess what? Half the leads you get will be either fake. The client doesn't need. I'll tell you a story in a minute. The client didn't even ask for someone to contact them and you go, hi. You want a website and they're like who are you 
Where did you come from? Hey, get off the phone. And you know, and they don't talk like that, okay? And if anyone does talk like that, I I respect your voice. But um, there will be some clients that don't like that. Um, right, so what I'm gonna say is right, is a company contacted us last week and they said they are massive in the UK, and I was really shocked because this company is a real company. And they've been in the national papers as a top company to work for. Now, remember, they are a top company to work for, meaning their employees have given a review of the company to say they are a good company to work for. What they said is, if you pay us two and a half thousand dollars, right, we will get you. Um, what was it? It was a 30, 120 leads per month. 120 leads per month. Now, the minute you hear that, you kind of go, whoa, if all of them convert, that is amazing income, right? However, I then did some research into them. I contacted people they claimed were part of their network. All six of them said, do not touch them with a barge pole because the leads they give you are fake leads. They've cold called the company and got their details and stuck it on a lead. The com the, some of the companies they send you don't even exist. And at the end of the day, once you've given them your two and a half thousand dollars, they don't care what you make off it because you're just part of the machine here. You know, they just want to get 10 of you a month, twenty five thousand dollars per month. And they don't care what happens to you because they got twenty five thousand dollars off you. OK, and, and that's the slight problem with a lot of these um like. I don't have too much experience with Leeds Gorilla and stuff like that or Bark or other companies. Bark we have used. But a lot of them, they promise the world, but you're going to have to pay up front to get the lead. So you're losing money before you even churn over a profit. And it's very demoralizing that. Um, yeah, so Yuri has said that um, a lot of landing page marketing, they're just there to make some money with very little or no really exclusive content. Yeah. They, and what we're talking about there is how you have a coach or someone on Facebook who says, hey, I can help you get leads. I can help you make your website company the best in the world, right? And you go to their page and the page, do you remember, the, do you know what I'm talking about, right? You go to their page and it is massive. You see, they're going, it must have taken them two years to do this. There's an image, there's a video, you know, polished suits and shirts. And the page goes on and 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 on. And it keeps telling you right at the bottom, limited time. For $200, you're going to get X, Y, Z, right? And I I know people that have bought and purchased stuff like this. And I really feel sorry for anyone that gets sucked into that because your money is gone to them. And whether you succeed or not, they don't really care. In fact, they always have a claim. They always have a disclaimer. And what it will say on all of their websites is that the income we said that we made we are not saying that you will make because it depends on lots of lots of variables. Just like a guy who was on our elemental community group and he said, I can help you make over £200,000 a year. Well, guess what? He did do that with one client. The client happened to be his friend. Right. So that so just be just take things with a pinch of salt. OK, right. Let's get on to this. OK, so. Why do you visit certain shops for certain products? Because you know what they offer, right? You know that if you go to Apple, you're going to get an Apple product. You're not going to get Samsung over there unless you start thinking about screens and all of that. You go to a Microsoft store, you're going to get a cheeseburger. No, you're going to get a Microsoft product or a computer or a laptop or something. OK, and with shops, just like websites, will have a high sales day and a low sales day. OK, now. I've actually mentioned this bit here, so I'm not going to repeat it. This is about how like you have a referral service. But what you end up doing is you end up paying for a referral service, but you're bidding on leads. But there's no guarantee that you're actually going to win a lead. And there's nothing worse than like with Bark. You pay like 20, 30 dollars for a lead and it's you versus five other people or companies and only one of you is going to win and where you're having to bid pay to get a lead. I hate that. And did you know that most clients, because whenever I contact them off Bark or anywhere else and I tell them we have paid for this, they did not know that. There's an advert that's currently on Facebook where it says 
click here and we will give you a quote for a website. I tested it. I went in. It gives you your details and I put in some details. It says, what are you after? You put in what you're after. You click send and it then says, great. Thanks for that. We will now get companies to contact you. Well, hold on. You just said on Facebook that I will get a free quote. Well, in factual fact, they harvested your info, the client's info, and they're now going to give it to other companies who have to pay to access that info to then contact the customer. So this poor customer is probably going to get 10 phone calls from loads of different people around the world. And they might be like, well, hold on. I'm quite peeved off at the moment. I thought I wanted a quote and I got referred on to other people. Get lost. Those poor 10 companies paid for a lead. Right. So how do we get out there? Right. Things you got to think about. Hey, look, there I am. Hello. What you got to think about is your brand, building your brand, nurturing your brand, and then trying to get that to helpfully convert customers by building trust. And I'm going to go through these. OK, these are not complicated, by the way. And I'm happy to share this page, um, by the way, OK, if anyone wants to go in and review what I had on here. In fact, when this video goes live on YouTube in about an hour or two, um, I will put a link to this web page on there so you can go in and view the content again. Right. Brand your business. Right. Build your portfolio. OK, build what you're about. Don't just have a website that says, hey, I build websites. What kind of website? Have you got examples on there? Can you have you got testimonials or well, video testimonials are the best? OK, that's real people of people talking about what you're doing. Social media. Buffer.com. I shall say it again. Buffer.com. OK, it is free for three social media accounts. So every day I uh, we have the premium one where we do it on about eight accounts. So I will like if you do the free one, you can put a post on LinkedIn, Facebook. Instagram or maybe Twitter. One post and it goes up to three places. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, there's loads of other platforms out there as well, but I find Buffer is the most consistent in how it operates and works. So select your social media platforms and make sure you're sharing. Now, do not continuously put out messages saying, use me. I build websites. I'm over here. You know, come to me. Don't do that. I am sick. You know, we're not in a market. Hey, who wants apples? Who wants oranges? Ripe strawberries, ripe. I love Oliver Twist the film, you know, I love that song. Right. So um, you don't want to do that. OK, what you want to be doing is telling people about what you do. So maybe you will share a website you've just built. Maybe you will share a testimonial someone sent you. Maybe you will share the fact that you're taking the day off to do something. Maybe you will share that you've just invested in new products. Like I did a video a couple of days ago about the recording studio. Go and watch it. It is ace Oscar winning stuff. Why? I want to let you into my world to show you the equipment I got and where you can get that equipment. Non affiliated. So you, I make no money of it, but it's just me sharing out to you. Select a niche. So let's say you want to build websites for. Um, dentists. Make sure your website and your portfolio and your testimonials and what you put out there on social media reflect the niche. You might have heard something lately about a new toothpaste product. Maybe there's something about the amount of fillings and cavities people have. Put it on social media. Doesn't have to be about the website, but it shows that you are involved in the niche because a dentist might look at it and go, oh, yeah, I like what he said. He's on that person's on ball. Hey, I need a website. I'm going to go to them. Think about that. And that links into defining your business model. What are you offering them when they do get to your website? Don't just have lots of stock images and stock content. Make define exactly what you're going to give them and invest in yourself. And what I mean by that is I have spent over five hundred dollars in the last year on a webcam, equipment, lights behind me, stuff like this. Why? I'm not making any money from this, but I want to get across in how I come across to you and clients and other people as well. Um, yes, Yuri is saying that um, they also use Hootsuite. That's it. Yeah, they're a good one as well. Um, um, never tried Buffer. Give Buffer a go. Um, Buffer is I think it's nine. I think it, I think it works out to eleven or twelve dollars when you convert to US dollars. 
to use Buffer. Um, but I found Buffer easier to use. But again, Hootsuite is really, really good. Right. Build your audience, okay? So do it daily. Every day, do a do a social media post, okay? Doesn't matter how rubbish it is or how nothing to do with websites. Actually, don't do rubbish, but do it every day, okay? Create a calendar if you want. So you say, right, on this day, I'm going to do a post about X. On this day, I'm going to do a post about Y. Make sure you do that. Become well known on social media. People are continuously telling me that I'm always on the Facebook Elemental group. Why? Because I want people to know I exist. I don't want to visit the Elemental community group once a week. You get lost in the noise. You become a visitor. I want to become like a constant so that people always remember me or they're happy to converse, which is why I'd like to think a lot of people here that subscribe to our YouTube channel, a lot of them came from the Facebook group. And hopefully you're joining in on this live chat because you've come to know me. You've come to trust me, I hope. I mean, I do a heck of a lot of support on there. You will not believe how many private messages I get. I make no income off the private messages, but I sometimes lose six to seven hours a day on private messages, helping people out on their website, build, a, build your profile. Search engine optimization. Make sure your website you don't just uh, you don't ignore rank keywords for your website. OK, so if you're niching in dentists, make sure you get the keywords in there. So hopefully if anyone searches for dentist website, you are somewhere there. You're never going to hit page one. It's you versus the world. OK, you might do a bit of luck is involved. But get your keywords right. Start an email list. OK, if you are not got an email list on your website, subscriptions, make sure you do that. OK. Because A, you can start to send newsletters. So anyone who is subscribed to Web Squadron, to our website, we give out a newsletter with a bit of info about what we're covering and we might give stuff away or we might tell you about the latest updates on videos and what we're up to. OK, now advertising. Let me just check. Am I going to cover that later as well? No, let me cover. All right. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to come back to advertising in a moment. OK, because we've got nine minutes and I want to quickly come on to that. The nurturing your audience, OK, this bit here, this now links into the bit about advertising again, OK? So if you want to have a look at this, you can look at this again on the live video, but I'm going to come back to this in a moment, OK? Right. And this all, it does link into converting your audience, OK? Be clear with what you're offering them. Don't hide behind, hey, come and get a quote. Contact us for a website, but don't give them any indication as to what you're actually giving. Try and give them a ballpark figure. Try and let them know that, look, our prices start from $1,000 or $500 or $200. Give them a ballpark, right? Because there's nothing worse than if you, there's no cost. I contact you and you go, yeah, we'll do it for $40,000. Well, I wish I hadn't wasted half an hour talking to you if you were going to go start there. That's way away from what I want. I don't care how good you are, but it's way away from what I wanted to do. So create some transparency. OK, and if you set your starting point, your minimum cost for a website is $500. If a client says, but I'm really tight for cash, do not offer them a discount to 450 or 400. Because once you get into that mindset, you will always be stuck in that mindset. So think very carefully about what you're offering and what is the bottom line threshold you're going to offer. And remember, not all customers are good customers. OK, some customers will treat you like you're their slave. I hate to use that term, but they will feel like I own you. I've paid you and you will do what I want, when I want, how I want. No, just because they paid you, you are building a partnership. OK, just because they paid you, do they not get a right to your time or you? You are providing a service. And if at any point you feel like they are disrespecting you or your staff or your agency or their demands, you should be able to pull out. And if you make clear to them, you pay a 50 percent deposit before we start the work or whatever, that is non-refundable. You will do everything you can to look after them. But if they mess you around, you have the right to pull away, OK, because there's nothing worse than being devalued or demoralized when you're doing something you love. All right, because I'll be really honest with you throughout my life. Working on websites, I have never felt more alive and ecstatic and happy when I'm doing videos, talking to you, liaising, networking, 
I'm building fantastic things. And when someone makes me feel like dirt, I was going to say something else, but when they make you feel like dirt, if I can't do enough to bring them back onto my side, I have to distance myself from them. Because why should you feel bad? Why should they, you feel ill or rubbish about it? No, look after yourself because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to get angry about doing something you love. Yuri's also mentioned, um, um, do we have to talk about the tools we use? I would say, yeah. So on our website, we mentioned Elementor. Okay. We also mentioned WordPress and WooCommerce. Why? I have nothing against Shopify, but I am not going to work on a Shopify website. I'm not going to work on Wix. I'm not going to work on Squarespace. It's the way I am. I don't like to do HTML coded websites either. So it is okay to mention what you do and what you don't touch. Okay. And sometimes if you are mentioning um, the tools you use, it kind of means that, you know, like right now I focus on Elementor. That fits in with my website. Okay. And it just means that you're strengthening your brand. You're strengthening what you're all about. You will notice that in our YouTube videos, I mention at the bottom of every single one of them, we only use Elementor Page Builder. I will never do a video on Shopify or Wix. I know people have said to me, oh, go on, do one. And I'm like, no, I won't. I'm very, I'm, uh, I'm very stubborn on that. I, I so I would say that, um, um, yeah, so please do mention your tools and what you use. Now, what I will say, yeah, is that like I said, with referral websites, okay, some of them are going to be fake. Some of them, they'll give you a lead where the lead doesn't actually give a damn about who you are. They never wanted to be contacted. So you've lost money purchasing a lead. The referrals website, they've made money off you, whether you make a successful lead or not, whether you make a conversion. Okay. And when you start to, um, I mean, of course, though, sometimes you can pay like, say, $500 for loads of leads. But if you can convert 10% of them or 5% of them, you might come out with two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 profit. So sometimes the initial outlay is worth it and it's worth the stress of it. But test it out. And I would always say, try and find out from other people that have used that service. The good, the bad and the ugly, right? Don't just go in blind. Make sure you can speak to real people about, um, basically about how do they find it. Cold calling. Now, if you're in the UK and you cold call a business, you're probably going to get hung up on. Because I feel like you're invading my space when you cold call me. Why? I'm busy. I don't want to talk to you. I know cold calling can work a little bit more in America and other places. Okay. And I know it's widely used by some companies. However, Ask yourself, when was the last time you gave a cold call the time of day? You probably did. You said, hey, yeah, thanks for calling. It's now 1 p.m. When did you last do that? And there's going to be a small percentage that will say, hey, sorry, I just moved this down so you can read it properly. There will be a small percentage that will bite. OK, they will probably say, yeah, OK, we want to talk to you about our website. But just think about it, though. What is the benefit of cold calling unless you've got a bulletproof system that's going to always work? Now, with Facebook ads, and this mentions back to the advertising above. When you do your video and whatever, don't do it with loads of fancy cars and a fancy inside a swimming pool and whatever or a casino because I'm fed up of that and a lot of people will switch off from that. OK, what you want to do is try and do a video which is unambiguous. Right. It's not audacious. OK, it's kind of it's going to like invoke engagement and interest and it's going to build trust. Now, here's a strategy you could use in the old days when I used to advertise on Facebook. And I'm talking many, 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 many years ago. You might pay 20, 30 dollars. You put out one video or a PowerPoint show or whatever, and you give 20, 30 dollars and it runs for seven days or two weeks and you get some hits and some engagement. But it's the same advert for two, three weeks and you're hitting a targeted audience, but it's the same advert for two or three weeks. What if you change your strategy? What if you do seven videos, seven? The first two videos are about what, where are you, where, who are you and where have you come from? What are the struggles you've had in your life? What was it like growing up? The next say three could be about now, what did you do to overcome that problem? 
And the last two videos are going to be about what do you offer as a solution? What can people gain if they engage with you? So seven videos, okay? Each of those videos you're going to put onto Facebook for one dollar. So over a period of a week, you will have set a video going out every day. One dollar. Now those videos, because it's one dollar, it might run for one to two days. But it's, so it's going to stretch from about eight, nine days, roughly. Seven videos, one dollar each, seven dollars. What does that mean? If you've gone for a targeted audience and I see a video tomorrow, I might see another video from you because it's happened to crop up. But it's a different video. The next day I might see a completely different video. Well, all of a sudden I'm now paying a bit more interest because I recognize you. Right. You're in my you're in my air, in my head now. And if I leave the last two videos before I start saying, hey, here's what we can offer you. And we're going to help you out with some coaching or a special website for booking appointments for your dentist or whatever like that. There is a higher chance they might convert because you've now built up trust. Whereas if from video one, you're like, hey, I can do da -da 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 -da. pay me to get it. Well, I don't know who you are. I don't even like the shirt you're wearing. So why am I going to do that with you? But if I can relate to your story, your problems, how did you overcome them? And then what are you offering? I might go for that. Don't worry, guys, it's nine o'clock in the UK now and I'm going to end in a moment. Um, so just remember, OK, that if you do that, seven dollars, I think we can all afford seven dollars, right? Yes, it is seven videos. Doesn't have to be videos. It can just be like PowerPoint shows. Um, Canva, you can create an animated video. There's loads of tools out there. Keep the videos to just like 30 to one minute. Don't go over one minute. Keep them brief to the point. Try and reach out, show your human, show who you are. OK, and if you can do that, that might help convert. But like I said, there is no bulletproof formula. And anyone out there that says I can generate leads for you. Yeah. If you want, I mean, of course, you could argue, well, they're generating a lead by getting me to pay for them. Well, yeah, but that's. I feel like you're entering the scam market now. OK, you're now scamming people to pay you for something that they're never going to benefit from. But they might go, well, I'll do the same to someone else. And I hate the fact we have so many scammers out there. I hate that. Um, <laughs> John, thank you, Batman. No, you're Batman. I'm Robin. <laughs> but yeah, no, thanks for joining in, John. Um, but yeah, look, guys, I'm going to sign off now. So I'm going to be clicking a few buttons. So you might still be talking to me while I'm signing off. But I'm going to say thanks for joining in. I hope you have found this useful. I am going to put a link to this. Um, on my once this is on YouTube, I'll put a link to this so you can go in and view the content. And I'll make sure I leave it running for as long as this test website is up and alive. But I hope this has helped you kind of think a little bit more about just your leads, buying packages, and then offering a discount, making a profit on that. What you need to be charging your customers, think about that. Incentivize the client by offering them a discount, not a discount, a uh, um, a percentage of the site bill if they do a successful referral and you know don't don't get sucked into some of these um people out there that say hey yeah we're going to get you loads of leads ask around test the market and just be a little bit patient and you know bear in mind though that um if you know there's a company out there that's niche buys in dentist websites say to them look i also do websites for um doctors right i do doctors you do dentist and we will never touch each other's business. If you ever get a doctor referrer, referral, refer them to me and you get a percentage of it. Likewise, if I get a dentist one to my doctor website, I refer them to you. So it's think about that area if you are able to network and connect with people. But hey, look, take care, everyone. I shall see you soon. And I hope you enjoy that. And please, if you are viewing this on YouTube, like. Get your friends and family to like, even if they have not viewed a video, just force them, you know, get their finger and hit that like button, subscribe and uh, leave a comment. I love reading comments and you take care and I shall see you soon. So I'm now going to go over here and say goodbye, YouTube. I'm going to say goodbye. Is it saying goodbye? Goodbye.